Yo, what's going on, guys? Tan my ear for simple snippets, and welcome back to the twelfth video tutorial under the web development course, wherein we are using Bootstrap, HTML, and CSS to build a complete portfolio website from scratch. And in this video tutorial, we are not going to be developing the website. I'm just going to be clearing a quick doubt of a user, wherein he asked me how we can use the responsive padding and margin, which is the spacing utilities provided by Bootstrap. I have talked about it in the previous video tutorials, but I did not make a dedicated video. But I think this concept needs a little bit of dedicated video so that it gets cleared once and for all, and then you can easily use it in the further videos also. So with that being said, let's understand what are these spacing utilities that is the inbuilt classes provided by Bootstrap so that we can add responsive margin and padding. So coming to the website right now, as you can see, I'm using the Bootstrap grid system. But before we get into the code, let's actually go to their documentation and read what is the spacing utilities provided by them. So this is that. web page i'll drop the link of this documentation in the video description let's quickly read through it and let's try to understand theoretically so bootstrap includes a wide range of shorthand responsive margin and padding utility classes to modify the elements appearance this simply means that there are some inbuilt classes in bootstrap which help us assign padding and margin to the html elements and the speciality of these classes is that they are responsive so just like the bootstrap grid system which changes its orientation depending upon what size of screen you are on you can see that it is changing into a vertical view from a horizontal layout similar to that these classes that are provided by bootstrap have different sizes of padding and margin depending upon what size you are on okay so how it works so we have responsive friendly margin and padding values and there are some inbuilt values which range from 0.25 rem to 3 rem now rem is a unit of size just like pixels and just like em and percentage actually we have rem i will drop a link to the concept of rem and the difference between pixel em and rem so just read through that you don't have to actually get into a lot of details but in general rem basically is a relative percentage or relative measure to one particular point or one particular value so let's say you are giving a size of a font and by default the html document has a default font size right so it is i guess 16 pixel so one rem is equal to 16 pixel okay and if i say two rem it means that the font size in pixel gets multiplied by 2 so it would be 32 in pixels so 2 rem would be 32 in pixels so similar to that we have padding and margin also now how we can use these classes and what are the notations of the classes so these are the notations as you can see so the property is m for margin and p for padding then we can assign one particular side so we have margin top padding top margin bottom padding bottom and then left and right right so we can also target one one of the sides individually by using this abbreviation so if i say m and t it means that margin top if i say pt it means padding top so similar to that we have different sides which we can target if i say mx it means that margin on left and right both if i say my it means margin on top and bottom and similarly we have px and py now we have some default sizes as i mentioned which is ranging from 0 from 0.25 rem to 3 rem okay so when you say m0 it means margin 0 m-0 okay so these are the examples so this is mt-0 which means that we are saying on the top we don't want any margin we want it to be 0 if i say ml-1 it means margin left 1 so this is some basic theoretical understanding you don't need to get into a lot of details about what is this dollar spacer this is basically the inbuilt variable which has some value which gets multiplied by these rem values and then you get the actual padding size but let's go to the code and actually try to apply these responsive paddings and margins and let's try to understand so coming to the code this is the same bootstrap grid system code so very simple if you followed the previous 11 video tutorials then this would be very easy to understand we have the container then we have the row and then we have 1 2 3 and 4 columns with a 3 3 split so 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 which will give you 12 so that's why you can see it is occupying the complete row and since this is a container there is some space on the left and right if i give container fluid it will take the complete width of the screen but let's stick to container right now and this my container is of course our own class which gives the background of silver right now it is not applying let's apply it okay so the silver color is applied actually but since it is exactly occupying this much space the color is hidden by the individual column colors so i have this my calls also so i have assigned my calls to the individual divisions which are the columns inside the row so this is a aqua color which is applied and then i have applied a border of 3 pixel solid 
Now, if I add a little bit of padding over here, if I say P4, now you can see that silver background color is shown over here, which means that it exists just that because there is no padding between the container and the row. So you can see there is padding left and padding right. But otherwise the container is taking the exact size of the row. So that's why we cannot see the containers silver color. Anyways, moving on to actually implementing the padding and margin. So I hope you know what is the difference between padding and margin. So padding is basically adding some space inside a particular division or a block level element. So that block level element can be anything. It can be section, it can be a paragraph, it can be a division and so on. And margin is basically adding some spaces outside that block level element. Okay. So let's add a little bit of margin, the first column and let's see what happens. So the way we add margin is by saying M. So M stands for margin. So this is how you use the class. This is what is given over here. You can see M. The next thing is we have to choose on which side do we want to apply the margin. Now, if you want to apply margin on all the sides, you do not specify anything. And the last thing is we have to give the size of the margin. So if I say M hyphen zero, it means that there will be no margin, but we want some margin, right? We can go from zero to five. So let's directly say five. Now, if we come onto the website, you can see that there is some margin added, right click on it and inspect element. So if I select this division, you can see the number of classes that are applied over here. Hit F12 if you want to toggle the developer tools or you can say right click and inspect element. This window should open up if you are on a Google Chrome browser and you can see that this M5 is applying some margin. If I uncheck this, you can see that the margin is gone. Now, since there is some margin added on the outside of this division, that's why the division becomes short, right? But once the margin is added, there is some extra space added to the left and right. And that is the reason why this fourth column is shifted at the bottom because according to the bootstrap grid system, each column is occupying three spaces, right? We have given MD3. I hope you know how the grid system works. I have a dedicated video for that. So since it is occupying exactly three spaces and we are adding extra margin to the first column, that extra margin cannot be allocated in that one single row. So that's why the fourth column, which is the last column is shifted at the bottom. Okay. Now, if you want margin only on the top, I will say MT5, which means that you can see the margin is added only to the top. I can say MB5 margin bottom. I can say ML5 margin to the left and I can say MR5, which is margin to the right. Similarly, I can say MX, MX5, which is margin to the left and right. I can say MY5, which is margin to the top and bottom. Now let's see how the padding thing works. So let's add padding. I'm going to say P hyphen five. Now you can see what happened is when I added padding to the first column, it got expanded. If I just erase it out, you can see it is again coming back to normal. And when I add it again, that is P hyphen five, you can see that this one that is the content inside the padding also got shifted to the center because there is some value or spacing added inside that division. So if I right click and inspect element, you can see this is what is happening. Now you can see the green part is actually the padding. If you come and select this, you can see padding 48 pixel is added. And that is the reason why the actual text that is the number one is shifted to the center. Now the reason why all of these other columns also expanded is because obviously the row also got expanded, right? Because the column was expanded due to the padding, the row also got expanded. And since these all divisions are responsive, they occupied the equal space, but you can see the text inside these columns did not shift position because there is no padding added to these columns, right? You can see there is no padding. There's only little padding by default, which is added on the left and right, which is 15, 15 pixel. Now this is by default, but this is something too much. We can see it from the visuals also that extra padding is added. So now we've understood padding and margin. Now how you can control this padding and margin to change its sizes on different screens. So this is where the abbreviations come into picture. This is where we have SM, MD and LG and Excel. For XS, we don't need to give any abbreviation. When we say P hyphen phi, it means that this padding is applied for XS device to Excel device. That is all devices because Bootstrap is a mobile first platform, right? So all the stylings are designed in a way to apply on a mobile first platform first and then move ahead to the larger screen devices. So these are the sizes of devices. I hope you already know by now. If you followed this tutorial series, these values should be in your mind. Now coming down, how can you change the padding on different devices or margin? Now we can do margin or padding. We'll do padding and the same concept will apply to the margin also. So let's say on a large screen device, 
that is on an extra large device which is greater than 1200 you want a lot of padding let's say you want p5 so in that case what you say is p hyphen lg hyphen phi now this padding will apply on a large screen device and greater than large screen so let's change this to excel so you can see padding is still applied because we are on an excel device so when i shrink below excel you can see that padding is gone now let's say for a large screen device you want some padding which is not 5 you want it 3 so there you go you can see now we are on a large screen device because the pixel size is 1074 which comes under this range 992 to less than 1200 so there you go you can see the padding is a little bit less and if i go to large screen the padding will be increased there you go you can see the difference Now similarly you can have different padding let's say p hyphen md hyphen 1 so on a medium device you want very less padding so if i go on a medium device you can see very less padding is added and let's say for a excess device and small device or let's say for a small device p hyphen sm you don't want any padding so in that case when you go on a small device the padding is completely removed also on a small device our grid system becomes vertical because the breakpoint is given md so in that case you can see there is no padding and we are just talking about the first column over here the rest of the columns have a little bit of padding on the left and right which is 15 pixel remember so we are just looking at the first column right now because we are applying all these classes on the first column so this was responsive padding now note that if i don't have any of the large paddings that is the padding for the large screen devices by default the smaller sized padding will take over so it is very much similar to how the grid system works so for example what i'm trying to say is if i don't have this padding which is for excel if i remove it and if i come on a large screen device let's come on a large screen device and also if i go on a extra large device even then the padding is going to be the same of the large screen device you can see the padding is not changing now the reason is because bootstrap is a mobile first web development front end framework right so it applies styling based on smaller screens first so if you do not specify the size that is the padding size for a excel device by default the size of the smaller device will get applied so if i don't have lg over here you can see the padding size of md got applied even though we are on a large screen the padding size of md is getting applied because we have not specified a particular padding size for a large screen device so that's why by default the padding of the medium device is applied now if i don't have this padding also you can see the padding is again removed and we are just looking at this first block okay not not at these different columns we're just looking at the first column you can see the padding has become zero because the padding of sm is applied even though we are on a large screen device so when you want padding on different different devices to be different then you specify their abbreviations okay and then you get those different different paddings on different different devices now the same concept applies to margins also and again the variation also goes as follows if you want padding on one particular side so you have to say pt or pb or pl or pr for top bottom left right or px for left and right py for top and bottom and similarly the same thing follows for margins also that is mt mb ml mr mx and my okay so this was all about the spacing utilities that is the responsive margin and responsive padding classes which we can directly use into our code because of bootstrap now the biggest advantage of this responsive padding and responsive margin is that we don't have to worry about applying different media queries in the style.css if we did not have this responsive behavior obviously we will have to type different media queries for the different sizes right so on a mobile phone typically what happens is we don't have a lot of space you know so if i reduce the size to a mobile phone we don't have a lot of space so on a mobile phone the ideology is that we have to use the maximum screen so that in that case we don't want a lot of padding but on a large screen device you can see we can have a lot of padding because we have a lot of space now if you give the padding as static value over here let's say if i give padding over here as 30 pixel okay so by default some padding is added so in that case if you just shrink the screen by default you can see the padding is not changing and that is because we have given a static padding value which applies to the second third and fourth column and not the first one because for the first one we have the responsive padding classes if i remove this you can see the padding remains constant throughout all sizes and this is not what we want on a mobile first web application on a mobile first web application we want padding and margin to change its size depending upon what screen size we are on
so that we can make the maximum use of the space on a small screen device so yeah that is the main ideology here and that is the reason why we have these spacing utilities which are responsive in nature specifically for margin and padding so that's it for this video guys i hope you understood how you can use margin and padding and i had to make this dedicated video because i thought this was a little bit confusing but the concept here is similar to that of the grid system just that in this we are changing the padding and margin sizes depending upon the different breakpoints and in the grid system we were actually changing the orientation of the columns depending upon the breakpoints so yeah thanks for watching guys in the next video we'll continue on with our web development with the development of different web pages if you like this video give it a thumbs up if your doubts are cleared let me know in the comment if you still have any queries you can put them in the comment section and i'll see you guys in the next video peace